Hi, Dan back with another video. Today I'm going to talk to you about Strategic Air Command, or SAC, as well as the Food Packet In-Flight Individual. Uh, firstly, uh, Strategic Air Command was probably one of the most disciplined, well-trained, and probably the most powerful command in the U.S. military for about 45 years from the years 1947 and 1992. That being because SAC was formed to uh, uh, be able to deliver America's nuclear arsenal during the Cold War by long-range bombers and eventually also uh, inter intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs. Additionally, they also would take on doing reconnaissance uh, flights against the Soviet Union as well. So their motto was, peace is our profession. And that maybe seemed kind of odd for someone in charge of a bunch of nuclear weapons, but that was because in their mind they hoped they would never have to, and thank goodness they never did, have to use their nuclear weapons uh, as they knew that that would usually means not only be releasing a horrible death upon untold numbers of you know more than likely Soviets but as well as you know there'd be retaliation against the United States and who knows how many Americans would be killed more than likely their own families as the SAC bases probably would have been some of the first targets for Soviet ICBMs in the event that a retaliatory or even a preemptive, preemptive strike was ever launched against the United States. So that being said, it was a very stressful job, uh, but you know these guys handled it great through some tough times in American history during that era. And um, so we'll talk a little bit first about their uniforms. Early, well, through probably the 60s through almost the end of the SAC era in the late 80s, they wore this typical green uh, service uniform, which was standard for all U.S. military at one point in time. Their patch, you know, Strategic Air Command, had a black gauntlet with red lightning bolts and then black olive branches. The lightning bolts representing their power of the nuclear arsenal and the olive branches representing the fact that they hoped that they would be a deterrent for peace and that their missiles would never or bombs would ever be released in anger against you know another country so uh with the when strategic air command was disbanded in 1992 as part of the cold war drawdown um most of their bomber forces were transferred to air combat command you can see the patch here this uniform was coming into service with the air force in the late 80s the battle dress uniform and most of their missile forces were transfer transferred to um, Space Command, which those commands have since changed again uh, now in the War on Terror era. But, um, you know, during that time, these guys were on constant alert for almost, you know, that whole 45-year period where that was air or ground alert. Um, you know, they would, if you were on ground alert, those bombers would have to be in the air in 15 minutes, no matter what they were doing. They had to be in the planes and off the ground in 15 minutes. So they would launch those B-52s in 15-second intervals, uh, which takes a lot of skill to be that close. And uh, the guys that were on airborne alert, they could be in the air uh, for up to 45 hours with uh, in-flight refueling. And from the year 65 to 68, the Air Force ran an operation called Operation Chrome Dome, where they flew these constant... Uh, air alert missions along Soviet airspace as well as along the border of the U.S. And that was uh, so that in the event of a nuclear attack, bombers would already be in the air ready to retaliate. As ICBM technology came along, the bombers went to a ground alert status. But refueling planes as well as their looking glass uh, airborne command posts, those stayed in flight constantly. Uh, till the very end of SAC in 1992, uh, Looking Glass flew eight hours a day, 24/7, 365 for 29 years. And those planes were designed in the event that SAC headquarters or NORAD took a direct hit from a nuclear weapon was disabled. They would still have command and control aircraft in the air that could coordinate um, the remaining SAC forces against the Soviet Union. So those aircraft are still in existence today, but they do not, uh, due to cost and just the global situations change, they do not fly on air alert anymore. But uh, that's where the in-flight food packet comes from. Comes into play. 
you know, when these guys were on these extended missions, they didn't, uh, you know, have fresh food, so they had to have something like this to eat. On shorter missions, most Air Force crews will draw uh, rations from the flight kitchen on the ground before they leave. Usually they have pre-boxed meals. But this would come into play uh, when missions would extend beyond one meal period. So, like I said, some of those chrome dough missions, you know, up to 45 hours, they, I'm sure they were eating a couple of these while in the air. So... Contents are very similar to that of a meal combat individual, Vietnam Air C ration. Uh, a little different, but we'll open it up here and take a look. So, firstly, you got the traditional MCI spoon. Uh, this one is the later, you know, uh, white style, early in flight food packets, had the clear spoon. Then you got your accessory packet. Very similar to the uh, MCI packet, except it's in a silver rather than brown foil packaging. And these didn't contain cigarettes. Uh, I'm guessing they just they didn't want smoking on a plane even in those days. But it had your P38 can opener, chewing gum, sugar cream, coffee, tea, paper napkin, and then salt. And this meal containing ham, I don't think you'd really need the salt, but they threw it in there anyway. So you have the... Dessert item here, orange nut roll. You can see it's in the standard green MCI can. I can't find any lock codes on these cans to know when this one's from, but I'm guessing it's probably mid-60s, 70s era. So then you had the crackers. Now, this doesn't have any candy in it, like a uh, B unit out of an MCI. It's just the crackers. No peanut butter, no candy, no jelly. So not quite as uh, exciting there. Pork slices with juices. I believe this is what's burst and leaked onto this box, as you can see. At some point, I'll probably open this up and get that out of there so we can preserve the can. But today, I'm just going to go over it. You can see this was made by Oscar Mayer, you know, still around today making pork products. And this is pork, water, and salt. So I imagine this probably something kind of like a spam. Nothing too exciting, but if you're hungry, you'd eat it. And then lastly, can of peaches. You can see this is burst as well, so that's maybe what this other stain is. This thing probably burst up and shot old, musty, metallic peach juice on the top of the box. Uh, once again, I don't see a typical date code like on an MCI where it's just like 69 or 70 or something like that. So that's the inside of a fluid packet in flight. These were, you know, phased out in the early 80s, the same time as the MCI for the MRE. That's what the in-flight ration would become, just the standard uh, MREs. Although some of those, you'll notice, will have a uh, warning not to eat them uh, for flight missions because some of them are more prone to giving you flatulence, which isn't good in a pressurized cabin or in an aircraft where the pressure changes as you might change altitude so um if i ever open this thing, any of this up i'll probably do another video but just wanted to go over a little about strategic air command and what these guys had to eat on these long range missions while securing peace for america during the cold war any sac veterans or the air force veterans out there that may have eaten one of these during their time uh love to hear from you comments below uh thanks for all of our veterans out there and all the folks at SAC who went to work every day knowing that if they ever had to do their job, you know, it may have been the last time they ever did it. So everyone, uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, be back with another video later this week, hopefully on the ration cold weather. It's going to be a collaborative video with my buddy, Nate. He's got a one or two that he wants to tear into and eat. And uh, so we're going to do a video on that. Thanks for watching.